What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And uh, yeah, Pennsylvania weather. I'm okay with it right now. It's a little warm out. It's probably one of the last few warm days before we're actually completely committed to October weather. I'd say that we are finally dawned upon probably the greatest time of the year here in Pennsylvania. Spring's pretty nice too, but I don't really like spring all that much because I, I really I really can't breathe. And with that said, I'm kind of sad that it's hot out, but I'm happy that it's hot out, but I'm sad because I can't be wearing my flannel, which I love, which a lot of you have jumped on grabbing and literally there's only a handful left of each size. So if you want to get one, grab them now or forever hold your peace. I'm telling you when it's cold outside, you're going to regret that decision. I promise. And that flannel could serve as, well, you're winning ticket if you decide to get one for Super Duty Sam. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, one of you is going to be taking this truck home. It's been my daily driver. I've been cruising around it in the past few days. It's actually been my daily because you can see my house is completely empty. Somewhat of a rare sight over the past few months as we've kind of been very congested. Then we made this massive transition to where a lot of stuff either broke or is just not in our presence and I get to spend time with this wickedly sick truck. Wickedly sick truck to the fact that I'm going to drive it as much as I possibly can before one of you takes it home because I love it that much. I seriously absolutely love this truck and all of the details associated with it. Now in today's video, we might get to shooting a little bit of the bow. If you guys can recall, I had told you that we just picked up some new goodies for the bow. I shoot a Hoyt Carbon Spider, picked this up four seasons ago. Uh, to anybody that hasn't caught some of my small little periodic hunting updates, I do shoot archery. I've had the bow for four seasons, but I've never filled a tag. It actually looks like we might be getting an antlerous tag here in PA. I submitted super late for it, but my WMU actually happened to have a few extra, and I saw that the check got cashed to get it, which is like a really good sign. But I have not gotten my pins completely locked in because we did pick up a new black gold sight. The 20 is pretty much locked in. I've got all of my arrows built. We've got the rage in the cage, baby. We got a nice new trophy ridge quiver. We got the kind of red and black theme going, and we got our luminox up on the back. We got all of our target arrows here ready to rock and roll with their field tips and uh yep another change we made to the bow this year smooth was the addition of a new qad drop away so that's been super nice you guys can see we got this black gold sight it was pretty nice a little bit expensive but i feel like you get what you pay for they got the nice illumination ring there so you know what you're looking at as you're about to take the shot and you guys can see i already got y'all mounted up here for gopro footage of well hopefully landing an arrow right where we want dear lord i've been more than patient for this time and i've got a great spot this year i really hope that we can close so i'm sorry for the rant i do want to bring the bow with us today i'm going to bring the target gonna bring the allen keys and uh hopefully we can get some shots down range just to make sure everything feels good and potentially even test out our gopro mount but that's gonna be a little bit later in the video today ladies and gentlemen we are gonna be playing around with a tool does anybody know what that is let's think way back to high school geometry class does it still ring a bell yes no maybe so here if i turn it on and i change its angle we get a little number with a small little circle up in the top right corner. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is, well, a protractor. Not like the one that you used in high school geometry class, but it's more of like a contractor grade protractor. And you might wonder, well, what the hell are you gonna be doing with a protractor? Ozzy's kind of... I was just kind of wondering the same thing. He's like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing there, dude? You good, bro? We're gonna be measuring some angles, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna be measuring more or less acute angles versus like 90 degree. Let's see if we can get this to 90. Uh, right angles for days, baby. <laughs> oh no. But yeah, so no right angles today, no obtuse angles today, but rather acute angles. But the question is, what kind of acute angles are we gonna be measuring? Well guys, I learned something the other day that blew my mind. I shared it with a few of my friends and they also seemed equally as surprised, so I decided to make a YouTube video about it. But we can't make the YouTube video here. We need to go somewhere where there are a lot of trucks. So uh, yeah, let's do that. And uh, we are gonna bring this stuff too, because I really need to get my 30 and my 40 pins dialed because I'm gonna be out as soon as this coming week and we gotta make sure we're ready to Rock and roll, boys. <laughs> So put your math bell 
belt on, ladies and gentlemen, because today we are going back to geometry class, but no, we're not talking about lines. We're not talking about Pythagorean theorem. No Y equals MX plus B. Wait, is that even geometry? I don't know. It's been a minute. I barely even made it out of high school. Yes, yes. I, uh, I had a 2.3 GPA in high school and I barely got accepted to Penn State. I actually got accepted to Penn State by somewhat playing the system, being that we're on this topic. Uh, yeah, I applied to Penn State as an associate's degree for a liberal arts major and then I uh, ended up changing it to a four-year degree once I was accepted. I made Dean's List every semester in college, as a matter of fact, but high school wasn't a, wasn't a very bright time for me. But none of that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Rather, we're just looking at angles. And angles of what exactly, Jack? Well, it's a great question, and we're looking at angles of mirrors. Yes. Did you know, did you know, the big question right now, you gotta comment below before we start measuring angles on vehicles, did you know that the mirrors on trucks are at different angles? Drop a comment down right now. Did you know that? And if you do know that and you're so smart, kudos to you, well, A, for knowing that, but why? Are they on different angles? And then also I need to know, is this something that a lot of you actually knew or is this something that I was just kind of living under a rock for? I don't know, but let's get to testing. So it blew my mind when I found out that the angles of mirrors on trucks are actually different because if you stand in front of the trucks, you can actually see that that mirror sticks out further that way than that mirror where it kind of goes back. Do you see it? Here, I'll kind of go up here. I think that that's a really good angle. You can actually see how that mirror looks as if it goes straight out at a 90 degree. It's not 90, but it looks a lot closer to 90 versus that one right over there. The big question is, do you see it? Well, it's all qualitative observations that we're taking right now, but let's make them quantitative. So let's uh, let's power this thing up at zero. We'll set zero, great. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find two measuring points to get this thing to read out. We'll throw it right against the window. We'll go up against the base of the truck, and then we will go out. And we are currently reading in at, what's that say, 77 and a half degrees on the driver's side. That's very close to 90 degrees, but not quite. Closer to a right angle than it is to a small acute angle versus 77 and a half to 68 point seven degrees so that's like what a nine degree difference roughly kind of on average between the passenger side and the driver side now we got to take some other samples to uh just go ahead and confirm our hypothesis so let's go to this ram right here we'll do the same thing on the driver's side all the way up so there's some continuity in our measurement where are we at here damn this thing's tall 64 and a half degrees on the driver's side versus 50.6 degrees so that's like what is that 14 degree difference between the passenger side and the driver side. So I feel like if you look at the truck from this angle, it's really hard to tell. But if you look at it kind of from right here, you can actually begin to see it. Lighting is kind of strong right now, so it's making it challenging. But do you not see how obvious it is now that that mirror is shooting back versus that mirror that's going out? We need another candidate. So we got Ford, we got Ram. Now let's go GM, GMC Denali specifically. Right up against this here, 79 degrees exactly versus let's just say what? We'll take a guess. The first one was nine degrees. The second one was like 14 degrees. Let's just say this one's like 13 degrees. 71.8. So that was like eight degrees. So my guess was completely wrong, but it still shows that there is blatantly a mounting difference. Now, does that not blow your mind? Because that completely blows my mind. And now I don't even have the ability to look at trucks the same because every time I look at them, I just think to myself, oh my God, the one mirror sticks out further. And it's like something that once you see it, you can't unsee it and you're forever going to see it. So I'm really sorry that I had to kind of spoil oil how beautiful the truck's proportions are to you because really they're actually not proportionate ever from the factory. That blows my mind. You know, and I'm curious. Old Subaru here. Now oh, this one's kind of hard to measure. So I don't have a, like an exact reference point. We're not doing the Subaru. We'll do this old Cummins though. Kind of hard to measure that one too. These things are seven inches long and at times you're hitting the mirror so the reference points aren't going to be exact per se. But I want to throw you guys back up here. Can you see how obvious that is now? So all of this came about actually by an interaction that I had with our good friends at Boost Auto Parts. As you guys know, I've been working with them for a lot of my builds. I've got their mirrors in the Mini Max. I had them on Dream Diesel Giveaway number one, Dream Diesel Giveaway number two, which was Ron Burgundooly. I now have them on Long Bed Larry. I love their product, but on the older trucks especially, you can really notice the difference to the naked eye without actually having to glance and stare and compare that the mirrors are actually different lengths. I don't know if these are Boost Auto Parts on Caleb's truck and they're still on the iconic GM tilt, but is it more obvious on this truck for you to see? 
In my opinion, it's pretty obvious, but it's kind of difficult to tell because they're angled up. It kind of takes away from the measurement. So I basically reached out to them and I was like, hey guys, I don't, I don't know if I'm stating the obvious here, but does the driver's side mirror stick out further than the passenger side? And they were like, yeah, Jack. And, and I said, oh, it wasn't just a fluke that all four of the trucks that I had with your mirrors were like that. And they're like, oh no, that's not a fluke at all. As a matter of fact, they're like that intentionally. And I said, oh, well, why? So they sent me a little article and it had this infographic on it and it basically explains that it's all due to the driver position. So being that you're in the driver's seat on the left side of the vehicle, you have a shorter distance of sight to the driver's side mirror versus that of the passenger side mirror. Basically, it all comes down to kind of that angle effect. It's kind of like you're taking that shot on the hoop. You got to hit within the box in order to get the ball to bounce into the rim. Same concept. If you hit outside of that box, you're not going to be able to get it in. But in this instance, you're not going to be able to see. So ideally, if you sat dead center in the middle of the vehicle, like a McLaren F1, the mirrors would be mounted at the exact same degree of pitch. But in this instance, this one needs to be out further in order to allow for you to see backwards and gain that adequate visibility. Now, I'm not a physicist and uh, I, I can't say that I would have any logic behind the reason why they are the way they are, but to my really, really smart, super educated people in the audience, why would they have to mount differently if you can just adjust these mirrors? I feel like you'd be able to accomplish the same thing. You'd almost just need a little bit more adjustability. Then again, I guess it might impair your field of sight and the holistic perspective. Maybe you can't see 100% of what you'd see on this side versus that side or vice versa. I really don't know to my extremely educated or very knowledgeable automotive enthusiasts out in the audience, please drop your comments below because I am extremely curious as to why that is. But now the big question is, does that blow your mind? I wanna know right now if after this video or even during the video, you decided to get up from your chair after or before to go out to look at your truck or your car or whatever to see if you can see the difference. I need to know because going forward, I can almost damn near promise you if you watch this video, you're always going to look at vehicles the same. You're gonna go stand in the front of them and you're gonna say, oh my God, they are definitely not even. It kind of sucks actually, I'm not even gonna lie. So I can't really talk that much more about mirrors uh, so you guys know what that means. Thank you, by the way, Sam. That was very nice of you. Protractor, gotta stay safe. We have a date with a bow and a specific area and a 30 yard target and a 40 yard target because I'm telling you what guys, I'm about to get out into the woods real soon here. I already got my spot all set up. I actually ended up going out and picking up a fixed stand and a nice set of sticks. We're up 24 foot. I actually have a trail cam out there and I've already seen a few doe. One small buck, he's just got four points. Big old bodied SOB. Love to throw an arrow at him, but fortunately he is not legal in uh, this good old state of PA. Game commission would not be happy about that. Plus I'm an ethical lad, but that still doesn't mean that we don't want to suit up for this doe tag, which is the first time that I've ever had a doe tag. When I was in Michigan, it was pretty cool. It was like four or five years ago and you could actually harvest multiple bucks and multiple doe. I think they've since cut down on that because of the coyotes. But when I came to PA and they're like, yeah, one antlered and one antlered is, antlered is, antlered list, I was kind of a little blown away. And you have to submit for the antlered list, antlered list, antlered is, antlered is, I don't even know. You guys get my point way ahead of time. I procrastinate everything and do it all last minute. Procrastination Nation, I know you guys are out there, but for whatever reason, it ends up paying off really well when you procrastinate. I mean, look at Austin, for instance. He waited to the last minute and he ended up getting Ron Bergen Dooley. I don't know, it's all by chance. Not to say that I'd ever want to gamble on that though, because uh, probably, yeah, I have no idea. So Jamie, AKA J Smuck from LRA, that's his truck right there without mirrors because they're down at Peachy Cummins, AKA Peach Bottom Auto Body, getting some paint match work done, was nice enough to let us use his property to set up Target. One day I will have a farm and I can't wait because of the fact that I would like to be able to utilize my firearms on the property. I'd like to be able to shoot bow, hunt, and own a tractor. Are you guys Kubota fans or are you guys John Deere fans? I don't know which way we'd go. The John Deere you pay a little bit more for, good name. I think the color thing. Kubota, I had, that's how I started my landscaping company when I was a young kid. Great tractor. Drop a comment below. I want to know. And I want to know why. Not just because. I want to know your reason as to why you'd pick one or the other. And boys, you know we are going to be setting up some GoPro footage with the bow today just to make sure that it works really well before we take it out into the woods. Hell yeah. This is the best therapy that one could ever get. So I actually really love having the chance to sight in the pins on my bow. I had another sight that was really nice, but it was kind of a hand-me-down and I was finally in a position where I could actually pick up one of my own to truly kind of make it my total custom package. We've got our 40 yard, our 30 yard, and our 20 yard lines. Then we've got target down yonder with a nice little backdrop as well, currently unoccupied back there. And then a whole bunch of property to follow in suit. We are in a little bit of uh, an 
uphill shot, but that really shouldn't matter too, too much here. Uh, 40 yards is really about the max distance that I'd ever really want to shoot. On my old site, I had five pins. It was 20 through 60 yards, but 50 and 60 were, I mean, that that's like really, really far. When you're shooting archery, you kind of have to adjust for the arrow to kind of do one of those. It's not like a bullet that goes straight. 40 yards is probably going to be the max distance that I will ever be shooting. And three pins is a lot more manageable on the eyes. It's so the one thing that I really like about archery. It's kind of like golf. You need to constantly do it and constantly practice. So you're prepared for the situation of when something walks in. I feel like it's really a more intimate game. I love rifles. Don't get me wrong. I am a huge supporter of the second amendment, but there's kind of the, and I'm not trying to diss anybody. I'm not trying to throw shade on anyone, but I think a lot of people can sight in a rifle and pull a trigger. Personally, I think it's a little bit easier. I will end up buying probably like a 30-06 or something like that once I actually fill tags with my bow. But again, I'm dedicated to the cause. So let's go ahead and start slinging some arrows here. So we got our 20 basically locked and dialed. I really like where it is. Now we're standing at the 30-yard mark and uh, we're basically just trying to work down. I like to use my 20, shoot high, try to get red, which is my center pin at 30 right around the center of the target but i'm still shooting high with my 20 because i know that that one's at least pretty dead center you never really get a, a true zero so we'll see how this goes here and hopefully we make some adjustments adjustments are as easy as wherever the arrow lays you want to adjust so if we're shooting high move your pin up if we're shooting low move your pin down and the uh the vertical axis should be good because i've already got that locked in with my 20 so that's one nice thing about the bow this thing is definitely a lot heavier with a gopro attached to it though Not bad, not bad. Never really realized how far 30 yards is until you're actually standing 30 yards away trying to huck an arrow. Not bad. Although they might not be the tightest group, still in the cage, it's where you want it. It's crazy, just a few ounces with the GoPro makes a world of difference. And I'll tell you what, for some rough estimates, I'll take that all day. We're pretty much in the center of the target, except for that last one, but I definitely dipped out a little bit there. I wouldn't say that that's all that bad at all. Target's starting to lose some of its density. So I gotta know, in my audience, you guys like this kind of content. If you do, oh man, the bow makes for a great camera holder, by the way. If you guys like this kind of content, I can definitely feature it in more. I know it's not my normal. I had some other things that we could do today, but I figured we'd try it out with something just a little bit different. It's honestly really cool to bring you guys along into some other facets of my life, because y'all see a big yet small part of my life with what I do with trucks. All right, let's see if we can get this grouping a little tighter. But again, shooting for the first time at 30 with this new sight and the GoPro attached, I'm pretty happy. Definitely got a little bit of work to do, but getting into the general proximity is, I'd say 20% of the game, and then working on the fine tuning is probably about 80%. All right, boys and girls, we're back at the house now. We're hanging out, we got all the gear unpacked. I do still need to wash all my stuff to make sure that we are desensitized, literally, so we ain't stanking out there in the woods, so the deers ain't smelling us, you know. Running joke is, I feel, hello oh, neighbor. Going from somebody that never used to hunt to somebody that does hunt now and has the eyes for it, it's almost like you always see deer when you don't want to see them. Hence, when you're in a vehicle or maybe when you're on a motorcycle or whatever the case is, and then you're in the woods, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, I actually, uh, I feel good. I feel good about this season. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it's a little bit different. I'm sorry if it didn't appeal to all of you, but the mirror thing though, the mirror thing, is that is that crazy or what, guys? Is, are, are, are you still as blown away on that finding as I am? The fact that all vehicles are like that? I feel like that's not disgusting enough. So hopefully you find it interesting. We should be picking up the 2020 Denali here very soon. It will be making its debut back on the channel. Yes, yes, the running joke is uh, say goodbye Denali. Denali now exits the scene. I get it, I get it, because the Ford, yeah, 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 I get it. Before this night goes down, we're actually about to go out and shoot some really epic drone footage. You guys all see that through Enthusiast Apparel. If you don't follow that Instagram, definitely go ahead and do it. Enthusiast and then Apparel, because because Enthusiast was taken on Instagram and, and, I, and I couldn't get it. But we got over 43,000 of you on that page. and. Uh, that's my heart beating loud because I love you guys so much. If you haven't followed me on Instagram already, that information is also down below at Dirty Max, D U 4 R S T Y Max. Capitalize on double entries. They are ending this weekend. So if you haven't jumped on them, jump on them while you can, if you so want to. And well, one of you is going to be taking this truck home. I got to get to clean it a little bit because as you can see, although polished wheels look good, they do require some maintenance, but it's okay. You stay on top of them and they just pay off in fat old dividends. Well, like we can love you guys. Do you best. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you guys for almost 200,000 subscribers. I, I was going to say I was a, an F word. Love you guys, but, but I got to keep it PG. I freaking love you guys. See you in the next video.